Hello, and welcome to Finding Limits Numerically. Uh, my name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I am a lecturer at University of Texas El Paso, and this corresponds to our Calculus Math 1411, Section 1 1.2. This is Part 1 of 3. This is looking at numerical limits. So, in general, what's a limit? <clears throat> Graphing functions seems pretty straightforward for functions that have a domain of all real numbers. Choose a few domain points, find the corresponding range values, then plot it and join it with a smooth, smooth curve. We could do that in any algebra class. It's when the domain has exclusions, we need to determine what's going on at or near, at or near these values. In order to do this, we use what's called a limit. So what is a limit? Informally, all right, so we'll get to the formal definition in a different video, but informally, if a function f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a single number, in this particular example down here, if it comes, becomes arbitrarily close to 4, as x approaches a c value, and our c value chosen here is 2, as x gets super close to 2, what's the f of x value doing? And it could be 2 from the left, it could be getting close to 2 from the right, my x values. What are the y values doing? The y values are coming together at 4. So we say 4 is the limit of f of x as x approaches 2. Right, so the limit is the y value that the function approaches as the x values get closer and closer to your c value, in this case 2. Notice the open circle, because we do not care what f of 2 is. We're looking near it. Think of a, a neighborhood as actually a good term for it. We don't care what's happening at this particular house. We want to know what's going on in the neighborhood of that house. What does it look like all around it? <clears throat> so if f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a single number l, and we have a limit as x approaches c from either side, we write the notation as this. The limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l. Right, so the limit, you have to tell uh, the variable and what it's approaching. We have our function, so you can't just write lim equals because that's not appropriate notation. The limit of what? The limit of f of x, or write out the actual function here, equals l. So the y values approach l as the x values approach c. All right, so one way we could do this with limits is to use a table of values. And with a table of values, there's a lot of choice going on. Don't be stressing out about, did I make the right choice? Is that the right number? Let's take a look. The limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. So we want to get our x values close to 2. So I'll take some values that are below 2, 1.9, 1.99, 1, and they're getting closer, 1.999, 2, I don't know. And we'll get some values to the right of 2, and these are opposite order of what a normal number line would have them, but 2.1, 2.01, 2.001, 1, I'm getting closer and closer to 2 from values above 2, larger than 2, to the right of 2. And I'm choosing values close to 2, below 2, to the left of 2. All right, so notice over here, I have my function, x minus 2 over x squared minus 4, my function, I've used the parentheses appropriate for a graphing calculator if you want to use the table function. Parentheses around the entire numerator, parentheses around the entire denominator, here we go. As I fill in the values for below 2, and I just use a calculator for this, I input my y equals using the parentheses, I input a 1.9 as an x value in my table, Please feel free to ask for help on the table if you need it, uh, on the table function of your calculator. 0 0.2564, 0 0.2506, 0 0.2501. We're going to leave that for now. We can't put 2 in. Notice that 2 squared is 4, and 4 minus 4 makes a 0 in the denominator. We can't choose a value of x equals 2, and that's why we choose values close. Now let's use the other half of the table, and we'll choose values close to 2 from the other side. Same function, now when I input 2.1 in my x value for an input, my output is 0 0.2439. 0 
0.2494.2499. So we can fill out our table. Make sure your accuracy on the decimal places is appropriate for whatever assignment you're doing. And it looks like 0 0.2564, 0 0.2506, 0 0.2501, 0 0.2499, 0 0.2494. It looks like the limit is going to be 0 0.25. They get super close to a quarter. So we make an educated guess, a guesstimate, as the limit is going to be one quarter for this particular function. Let's try another one. The limit as x approaches negative 5 of the square root of 4 minus x all minus 3 over x plus 5. Again, I can't put negative 5 in for x because I'll end up with a 0 in the denominator. So this is not a value that's in the domain of the function. What's happening near there? Using all the parentheses necessary, a set of parentheses around the entire numerator, a set of parentheses around the entire denominator, I use a table once again. Values to the left of negative 5, values to the right of negative 5, but they're getting closer. And it looks like they're approaching the same values. Negative 0 0.1667. Okay. It looks like that's probably a rounded value. So our answer is negative 0 0.1666666. But decimals, they're not very exact. This is a repeating decimal. A repeating decimal we need to turn into a fraction. And it turns out that a negative 0.1666666 is a negative one-sixth. Always use exact values unless specified otherwise. Last example here. The limit as x approaches 4 of x over x plus 1 minus 4 fifths and all of that over x minus 4. This one can get challenging on a graphing calculator to enter it, so don't forget. Always put parentheses around the entire numerator and the entire denominator. You have to be smarter than your calculator. Trust me, you are way smarter than your calculator. So always use the correct amount of parentheses, and you could use more, just not less, and it'll be all right. Again, four cannot be put in substituted, so we have no idea what the value of the function is at 4 because it's not in the domain. So what would it be if we could use it? That's what this table of values will show us and we'll get super close, it looks like, to 0 0.04. 0 0.04 is our guesstimate. 0 0.04 is an acceptable answer because that's a terminating decimal. Or you can convert it to a fraction and that is 1 25th. Uh, we can also do this with trig functions. Uh, this will be a special trig function we talk about later. But as x approaches 0, we can't have a 0 in the denominator. We cannot evaluate this function at 0. But keep in mind, anytime you use trig functions in calculus, use radians. Put your calculator in radian mode right now and leave it there. Radians. So I'm going to go a little to the left of 0 with my negatives. I'm going to go a little to the right of 0 with my positives. Notice the number of parentheses I have. The parentheses around the entire sign of 4x with the 4x in parentheses as well. All divided by x. It's a single item. It doesn't need parentheses, but you can put them down there too. That's fine. In radian mode, make sure you're evaluating. And this limit looks like it's going to be 4. This ends part one of three. The next one is gra limits graphically, and then we'll talk about the formal definition using epsilon and delta.